we've x-rayed him and there's nothing. The vet's had a lip, no wounds, no obvious problems as such. He's just very, very flat. Where was it found, do you know? Um, it's in caught up in some netting just on on a road. I um, don't know how long it have been there, mm. but it's very. I mean, they they could just pick it up without with it squirming or anything. So, mm. and they kept it for a few hours. And maybe it's just the trauma. Of, yeah, you can try and bite me. <laughs> maybe it's just the trauma of being caught up in some netting. Yeah, I mean, they don't know how long he was there for. Mm. So, he's just a bit lacklustre. He's not trying to grip or or anything, are you? I think you just need some care and attention. Maybe we'll um, we'll probably just keep him in a box overnight and feed him up. The Heap family that own it started keeping otters and owls. Um, in their Derbyshire home around about 35, probably 40 years ago now. This is the problem that they are so protective that they will um, they'll then all be caught. So uh, it's quite valuable for, for fur poachers if they manage to catch the entire family group of 20. Really? Has somebody got two? They had a, <clears throat> a rescued also, which I think they just kept in the back of their garden. And then from then on it just grew and grew so now their main home um, is now called the chestnut center and that's where it all started that's quite a big collection of otters and owls about 15 years ago the business expanded and they took over here new forest wildlife park and turned it into roughly the, the same concept as the chestnut center Lots of work on otter and owl conservation, rehabilitation. recently done a calculation that each otter cub that comes in and stays with us 15 to 18 months costs us in the region of just under £4,000 each otter. It then costs the RSPCA costings of about £1,200 to do the release. Now that's quite a lot for um, you know each little creature isn't it? Mm. Uh, this wild otter cub's called Evie. Um, she came into us um, about two weeks ago. She came from an RSPCA centre in Norfolk where she'd been handed in um, at about three months old. So uh, she was found as an abandoned cub. She was just uh, alongside a riverbank by herself. Uh, so she was picked up and handed into the RSPCA and they gave us a call uh, and uh, she came down to join us. Uh, she was in the veterinary quarters uh, for her initial assessment and she trashed the place. She obviously didn't want to be inside for very long so we moved her out into our uh, cub pens which was where we've just caught her from and we've moved her down into this pre-release pen today. Uh, hopefully within the next couple of months we'll get an otter cub in of a similar size to her and uh, we'll hopefully partner them up so that they can grow up together and then as soon as they're a year old we'll assess them for release. Over the last 10 years, we've put over 122 otters back into the wild, all of whom came from the wild and were returned to the wild. We feel that's quite an achievement uh, and we're all very proud of it.
diet, aren't you? Stop nicking people's cheese sandwiches. You, you do get attached to animals, obviously the residents more so than the wild ones coming in and out, um, but you do, you know, every, well you can't work, we've got what, 250 animals here, so you do, you do get those ones that you, you can't help or something happens to them as they get older. I have had some favourite animals, but they've passed away. We, we had a lynx here called Odin um, before um, Griskin, and he, yeah, I, I just loved going up there to see him. Um, but unfortunately, he was old and yeah, he passed away, so um, not a nice part of the job, but um, it comes to us all, doesn't it? You have to be quite tough um, if you're soft and you work in the animal industry then it is going to be very difficult obviously you have got that hard side where you've got a certain percentage of animals that you're never going to be able to help and you have got to draw that line you ha we have to have ethical meetings where um, we all put our um, our opinions forward because sometimes um, it, it's not going to work you're not going to be able to help that animal um, so that that side of the job it's very hard, but the satisfaction of the ones that you do manage to get to help, then obviously that, that, that is what you strive for. 